Alright, so here we are back in Resetir, and this is day two. We've already gone through the opening cutscene, so don't worry about that. And I'm going to... the first thing I'm going to do here is go out and visit the Adventurer's Guild. This is where you're going to manage all your dungeon runs. And you go here, you run your dungeon. So this is the first time you visit it, and go through the cutscenes of explain how how you go to how you go to dungeons and all that kind of stuff. The basis of the dungeon part of the game. We are just talking cutscenes. So here is the first adventure you will unlock right off the bat. This is Louie. Alright. So this is the basis of the backstory for the Hall of Trials. The Hall of Trials is the first dungeon which adventurers will run through in order to get their adventurer card. And their adventurer card they will be giving to you in order to basically say, hey, I have a rapport with you, I'm going to have this relationship with you so that you you will run the dungeons with me. So this is the backstory. You, as the merchant, are paying the fee, so that he will be able to become an adventurer. So yes, Tia is the very serious and blunt one of the partnership, whereas Lesa Tia is a happy-go-lucky. So here we are! Yes. Uh, and we will start the first dungeon run shortly after this lengthy cutscene. And while I could go grab some stuff, I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, save some. I'm gonna save some time because if I have to head back. Well, actually, right now, if I could, head, if I head back to my shop, no time will pass. Uh, each of these bars up here in the left-hand corner represent a block of time. You have four blocks of time per day. Visiting the city and then going somewhere else will take one block of time. Doing a dungeon will take two blocks of time. However, if you go directly to a dungeon and then directly back to your shop, that only takes two blocks of time. Going, going directly to a dungeon and then to some place in the city and then back to your shop will take three. Or vice versa, you go to some place in the city, then the dungeon, then your shop, also three blocks of time. So I will go here directly with Louie. And one thing I will do in this dungeon is I'm going to spend as much time as possible on it and running through and trying to level up Louie fairly fairly well so I don't have to worry about the, so I don't have to worry about him being under level when I want to run those higher dungeons over and over and over for the better for the better stuff to sell. So again they're going through this basis of this. You're standing there but you're protected it's almost like you're invisible to the monsters. All they see is Louie.
and you start with one item at most that you can take back in case that the adventurer dies. However, as your merchant level goes up, you won't be able to increase that. Now, uh, your uh, as your merchant levels up, you eventually will be able to take back three items in the case of death. Basically what they want to do there is the adventurer focuses on adventuring and killing stuff and we as the merchants focus on managing items for him so he doesn't have to worry about it. Beautiful relationship, no? Yes. And one thing you'll see over here in the the goal letters on the left side, the chain. Basically, what that chain means is as you kill monsters of the exact same type, so not like green slime, uh, the green slime, blue slime thing, but it has to be exactly the same type and same color. As long as it's the same exact type and same color, you'll build a chain which will give you more experience as you kill monsters of the exact same type. So as long as you're killing the, the exact same monster over and over and over, the experience you'll get for each time will go up. So that's a very easy way of leveling an adventure, your adventure very, very quickly. However, as you go through higher level dungeons, they will, there will not be the same type of monster as often as there is right here. Uh, I'm going to leave those there for now. The blue slimes, because there's no other blue slimes, and I've got this huge chain right now. Because I'm going to be trying to level Louie up as much as possible, as quickly as possible. And there's there's the entrance to the next, uh, the next floor. Again, I'm not going to go through there. I'm spending as much time in this dungeon as possible to get Louie leveled as far as possible. So I don't have to worry about uh, so I don't have to worry about that later and being under leveled for the dungeon that I want to run through. And also, I'm going to try and stock up as much as possible. Uh, this unidentified ingredient is something you're going to see at, at the beginning. Uh, as you'll be able to ad identify those items later on as your merchant level goes higher. But since we are a lowly level one merchant, we have no clue what that item is at this point. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and kill these blue slimes real quick. And then go to the next floor. Alright, so that's floor number one, and I'm already adventure level four, so that's good. It's very good. Alright, so floor level two. Slime first. Chocolate bar. And the backstabber. Chocolate bar is food that, that restores... There we go. That restores your SP, your spell points, which you use for your special abilities. And this is just a treasure that has a good value. Alright, so I'll kill this red one first. And the blue ones. Again, I'm trying to get this chain belt as much as possible to get literally as many levels as possible. Something you probably won't do on that first run through, but I am playing specifically this. And one thing that's nice about Louis, that, yay, that's his special ability, that's his first special ability that he can get. And different characters have specific things. Uh, there's other characters like, uh, like Nagi, and there's a, cu a couple others that have a similar ability to what you just saw there, the circle sweep. It allows them to hit everything around them. So, basically, when you go through and you're going through adventure, you might not necessarily like Louie to, be, uh, to, uh, to use as a character, or, or your adventurer. So, but there's plenty of different ones out there. Uh, the, the next one you're going to, uh, the next one you could possibly uh, collect is going to be Kalu, which is a mage, which was a mage. So you might prefer that kind of play style, or one of the things you're going to, uh, the next adventure you're going to get by running through the second dungeon all the way is Charm, 
Who is a little? Uh, who's a faster character? Uh, faster character that uses daggers. But for the purpose of this, I am si simply just going to be using Louie, so I don't have to worry about level uh, so I don't have to worry about leveling up those other adventurers and spending time on that instead of running the higher level dungeons just with one one adventurer and getting all the stuff that way. So uh, that's good enough for now. I'm going to go to room three. Or floor three. How much uh, space do I have so far? Total 20, okay. Yeah. I want to make sure I have that full 20. And here's the th thing about Louie. Oh, hold on. Ow. Let me kill these blue slimes first, and then we'll go to the interaction with these kobolds. I think, I think they're kobolds. Oh. Alright. Well, it doesn't look like he's gonna be throwing a rock at me. Throw a rock at me. Throw a rock at me. Fine. I'll just kill him. The thing about Louie, if there's any projectile, whether it's physical damage or magic damage, depending on how the how the monster is, whichever monster it is. If it's a projectile that's being thrown straight at him, and he's just walking, or uh, moving towards it, or whatever, and it's not attacking, he'll block it. So let's see if I can't get some, can't get one of these to throw a projectile at me. So we have throw a projectile. Fine. I'll just kill you, bastard. You won't let me show what I want to. Do. Oh no. Okay, that was also a uh, spell point restore item. But what I'm looking to here, uh, looking for here, is not necessarily items that will kill me or anything like that. I am looking specifically for high price items that I can sell in my shop for an amount. So you can see the first payment is due on day eight, and that is ten thousand picks. So I need to make sure I have at least ten thousand by that date. And items such as the back scratcher help very much with that. Rearrange button sorts your uh, sorts your items based on equipment first and all the other equipment first, treasures, ingredients, food, stuff like that. So this back scratcher, which is based by 1600, I could possibly sell that for 2000. That's gonna help a lot. Uh, raincoats, nah. The one thing I can do. Nope, uh, he can't do that. I am currently checking his uh, equipment. No, oh. right. It's okay. So the scrap plate will increase his magic defense, but lowers his defense, which I don't need right now. And. Anytime you're in a dungeon, you can always swap out your uh, your current adventurer's uh, adventurer's current equipment for him, but you have to be holding it. However, he will not keep that equipment, and you cannot drop his current uh, anything that would be his current possessions. So while you can, uh, so basically you'd be loaning him whatever equipment for him to use while he's in the dungeon. So say you have a better sword than he normally has, you can loan him that sword to use while he's running through the dungeon, but at the end of the dungeon, you will take your sword back, he will take his equipment back, and everything will be happy, happy, joy, joy. Okay. In order for him to have, in order for him to equip that new weapon permanently, you have to sell it to him in your shop. So I'll go ahead and go to room 4 here. Check how many items I have. 18 and 20. Okay, I want to make sure that's 20 of 20 before I leave the dungeon to maximize as much as I possibly can. Yeah, don't feel like you have to worry about about this stuff. In your, in your first place, you again. If you if you fail the debt, you will you'll go back to day two. You'll have all your items and stuff. It's not that it's not that big a deal. Oh, and I was not facing. So there we go. 
that was an example of his passive ability, which is to block any projectile that was going straight at him. Let me kill these blue slimes here so I have a little bit more breathing room. Looks like it's... Oh, I had to be facing it. Alright. See? Block it. Any projectile that's going straight at him, as, as, long as, he's, as long as he's facing it and not attacking, he's fine. So I just picked up a long sword, which is a better item than which is a better item than Louis has right now. So what I'm going to do for the rest of the uh, rest of this dungeon, which is pretty much just explore, I'm going to hit optimum equipment, which automatically get uh, which automatically transfers over the best equipment he could possibly have or possibly use for this dungeon right now. So that auto gives him the uh, the long sword instead of the worn sword, which is which is what he had. You can also mainly change by clicking on. Uh, you can also mainly change by clicking on what you, what slot you want, and then clicking on the item you want uh, you want to have. So you could manually change them that way, or do awesome equipment, which would get uh, which would give them the best possible. So that will change multiple things at once. Uh, in this case, it would not change the scrap plate because it actually provides a better stat in one situation than the defense. So be careful of that. While the optimal equipment is nice, uh, if you want a little bit more customization sometimes, it's not going to be necessarily perfect. However, for the most part, it's going to help. Uh, I'm not sure if he can equip that. Yes, he can. Alright. So let's go to equip. And that would actually lower his defense, so that's it's not something I want. Oh, and there's a uh, another yeah. finding green and over here. Oh, I can't carry anything. All right. Let's see what I have here. My inventory. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm not necessarily worried about the unidentified ingredient thing right now. In fact, I'm gonna drop one here because I can't necessarily do anything with that yet. Oh, another back scratch. Perfect. That is. Perfect. And again, the thing with Louis is, anytime you run into an issue, you can always use his. You can always use his sweep attack, but be uh, be careful with it at first, since he does have low SP uh, spell points. You can't you can't spam it. It uh, you should only be able to uh, you should only use it in real emergencies at the very beginning, since he's not gonna be able to use it that much. However, every time you level up, you refill your HP bar and your SP bar all the way. Which shouldn't be, which should actually be fairly, fairly often in the early going. So you don't necessarily have to worry about food or anything that much early on. There's, there's the exit, but I want to visit this floor first here. Make sure I visit all the floor. Uh... Slime fluid is actually fairly uh, fairly common and not used very much in fusion. So, I mean, gather it if you can, uh, gather it if you want. But I would usually uh, I usually swap it out for a different item in your inventory because it doesn't sell for that much and it doesn't sell hardly ever. So you're better off you're better off having that item slot for something else that is going to sell or is going to be more useful. So I'm just going to finish this off here by making by sticking around, waiting for other mon uh, other monsters to spawn, and I'm going to make sure Louis is at least level eight by the time I finish the dungeon. Because as soon as I enter that enter this portal over here to the fifth floor, that would finish the dungeon. Although, if I'm not getting anything else to spawn. Uh, seven and a quarter should be good enough for now. So I'll go ahead and walk through. And there's the end of the dungeon. This is the first time. Um, this is a cutscene you'll see the first time through. You will not see this cutscene any other uh, any other run through. Yeah, that's it. Well, 
you won't see this cutscene any on the run through if you have Louis' true card, which you'll get the true. And when you complete the game, you will get that adventurer's true. Uh, the adventurers you use the most, you will get that person's true card, which allows you to use, uh, which allows you to have that character from the beginning in any playthrough. So if you don't have Louis, you probably will actually go through this cutscene again to any other playthrough. Or if you're running this dungeon with any other character, so you ha unlock them, and you're running this dungeon to, uh, to with them, you will uh, you will also not see this cutscene. But that's the contents of chest, the actual adventure card that associates the adventurer with the merchant. In this case, you. And. <laughs> So, there it is. Oh, you're So, there's the basic dungeon run of that you're going to do day two. I recommend you do it right away. Unlock Louie, get some more items for your shop, all that good stuff. Yes, the door will be every five levels, as stated right there. Uh, if a dungeon have more than five floors, you will also see a portal to the next floor if you're not at the very end of the dungeon. So we'll see that we'll see that a little bit later on as we go to the second dungeon. But the door ends your dungeon run. You leave the dungeon and go back home. So yes, it is a go home, regardless of what they say. Alright. So that end screen there shows you basically what you collected. Those are all that good basic stuff. So what I'm going to do here is place a couple of these items with what I grabbed in the shop. Alright. And what this chest is, is when you... When you leave the dungeon, any ingredients that you had in your inventory get automatically identified when you go home or when you end up going back to your shop. So while I have the slime fluid three, the two unidentified ingredients that I had were the chestnut and the, uh, the additional slime fluid. So there's the stock that I want now, and I'll open the shop. Right. So then this. Damn. I was hoping he was going to go for the long sword, because if he bought the long sword, if he bought the long sword, he would have taken it and immediately equipped it. So that's unfortunate, but whatever. And just stone stuff. I'm selling these for a little bit lower than I might normally try and sell them. So this is you want to, uh, because I want to try and get that merchant level up as much as possible as early as possible. So that'll allow me to unlock more stuff. Uh, Talking about tier, you can see here, uh, so go through your merchant level, uh, starting level level 1, that's where you start at, uh, level 2, customers sell to you, level 3, you can take orders, which means they'll come to you and say, hey, I want such and such items in this quantity, say, I want three clothes in three days, and then you have three days, and they'll come back, and, uh, and, and uh, they'll come back when they say they will, as long as you have your shop open. If you don't have your shop open at all that day, they'll come back afterwards and be pissed. At you. But when they, uh, they'll say, hey, on this day, I want these items. So they'll come back on this day, and you'll be able to sell whatever item you have of that specific uh, of that specific category that they want. So say if they want two weapons, 
in three days, they come back in three days, you can sell them your most expensive items, so that's a that's a good way of being able to sell something to them that they might normally not buy. Level four, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to find uh, buy higher level items in both the guild, the first area that we visited in the first day, and in the market. So that'll allow you to stock up better items in your shop without going to the dungeon. I won't I won't necessarily use that. I'll be using the dungeons from the majority of my items. Future rank one. Uh, did you see the ingredients like the slime flu and the chestnut we had? That'll be used for uh, crafting items. So, or in this case, fusion. So at level five, at version level five, you'll be able to start crafting your own items. Now, sex be able to change your wallpaper. Uh, again, the wallpaper, the flooring, the carpet, the table, all that kind of stuff. Adjust your shop ambience, which determines who will, who's more inclined to come visit your shop. Oh, okay, here we go. Uh, level 3 is, they, uh, they can come in the shop and they just say, I want a basic item of this category. So, say, hey, I want a weapon, they'll sell them a weapon. The advanced orders is what I was talking about earlier. We'll say, okay, I want two weapons in three days. That's the advanced orders. So that's slightly different. Uh, level 3 can take uh, can take orders. That's just, that's more lines the lines of hey I come into your shop I want to I want specifically a weapon or I specifically want a long sword you'll sell them that level eight change the flooring level nine change the carpet same thing with the ambience all right so is that I'm going to restock my shop real quick with some of the new items that I want to sell I want to actually take this because I want that I want to put this in a position where it's in the spotlight, because I want to sell that. I'm going to keep some of these for now. Even though I can sell them for a little bit more than what I'd sell these items. Because they are the food. Although, I will, at this point, sell, try and sell the chocolate bar. And I'm only day 2, I already have 2,000 picks. I'm only gonna need 10,000 at day eight, but I want to plan ahead and start collecting as much of the uh, can ahead of time because that the that last payment is 800,000. The payment before that is 200,000. If you're not prepared for that, you're not gonna meet those. So they march level two. There we go. Uh, every time, every uh, at the end of every day, you'll go through the item summary. It tells you what, basically, what you sold, what you bought, what you found, what you found through your dungeon runs, all that kind of stuff. It will. It doesn't cover everything you would necessarily get throughout the entire day, but it does. It does go over the basics of item transaction, of what items you sold or obtained. Even though, uh, even though sometimes it might not cover everything, but that's day two. There we go, and I'll return to this game for day three, and we'll go from there.